Well, it is a very chilly day today, but I want to get started on a segmented turning. And this is all the material it's going to take. I've already ripped them to the proper size for the height of the segment and the width. And I've got them separated that way and marked so I know which one to do. I have some maple, paduke, and some sapile. That's what we're going to be using. I've got something else I'd like to show you that I made that should help the process of getting the proper lengths for segments. I recently built this. It's going to be an adjustable stop to get the right lengths. And I 3D printed these and uh, I cut slots in there. They fit just right. There's no slop. Got one of these bars that expands so you can get it in your miter slot, tighten it down. But this stop right here, from here to here, when that's closed, that's that's right up against the blade. I'll go ahead and show you how this stop works. I think it's going to work out quite well actually for cutting little segments. I've got it set at 0.6 inches. Lock that down. Still feels pretty good. This is just a scrap. I want to use a larger piece. The segments on these are really narrow. So I'll cut one of these and then we'll check it. Okay, let's see how that works in here. It's perfect. So, saves a lot of work if you can get that on the first try. That is absolutely perfect. Okay, time to glue some rings together. I'm just going to show two of them because, well, they're real small. It's going to be time consuming and I'm pretty sure it'll look the same throughout. Some of them are going to be harder than this. This is not the biggest and it's not the smallest. So you'll see that once I get them glued together. I have them separated in the groups of colors. These two, if I'm not careful and I get glue on them, I can't tell one from the other. So I'm separating them here. I'll get them up on the, this little piece of plexiglass and then I'll show you how I get them make sure they're flat to be able to get a rubber band on it because I also have a little bit of trouble trying to get rubber bands over the little rings without them flying <laughs> and I don't like them flying across the shop. So here's what my plan is. I will get some glue on this side of the piece of maple and then I just start taking the pieces that go next. And I, yeah, you can see that glue there. So I'll get glue on this, and I'll grab one of these. We'll get some glue on that. We'll go back to the maple. And then the paduke. And so on. All right, now I'll just push these fairly close. <clears throat> I'm going to move the camera and I'll show you how I can keep these from popping off when I put a rubber band on it. I've moved the plexiglass under my glue press with a block on here just to elevate it up a little bit. This is just one of my tenons that I use for all kinds of things, hot gluing pieces on. 
I'm going to put that over that piece right there. Slip a rubber band right up over that shaft. I'll clamp it down, put some pressure on it, and I'll take the rubber band, drop it around here like so. Now they didn't go flying. Just like that. That's it. I'll just take and move these around so all the corners are lined up and it should be perfect and I don't think I need any more rubber bands on there it should do the job I will take and twist it off of here though clean that glue off I know I use a lot of glue but it works for me and I'll probably keep doing it alright I'll get set up and do the next one clean this plate off Actually, I've just pushed the glue over here and I can still use it. So, I know watching this at a fast speed is probably not very exciting. I have 17 rings to do. If I do it on regular speed, it's really not going to be very exciting. Sorry about that background noise. I've got a heater going. I have to keep it halfway warm for the glue to set up. Alright, very little glue wasted there. I'll get the rubber band on this and I'll be back after all the glue is dry and set up and we'll move on to the next step. So I have all these discs glued up. I got it done last night. This morning I flattened one side of it. I've got a piece of wind gay in the chuck. I'll start gluing these on, flatten these out, true them up and so on until I get all 16 discs that I have. I'll show you what they look like. This is actually the order that they get glued in place. Alright, I'll have one more to do. I haven't decided what I'll use for the top. So we'll do that once I get this turned. So, let's get going. Alright, this is the piece of sapile that I'll be using for the base. This is, uh, I call it ring number two. Gonna get some glue on it. There's nothing to line up on this, but from now on, all the rows will need to be staggered the right direction. So, when I showed you all those discs, I said I have one side flattened. I have a 14 inch disc sander that I built many years ago, and that's what I used. All right, I'm going to let that sit for a half hour or so. What I'm doing here is I'm rotating the disc that I'm gluing on so that the joint is in the center of the piece below it. And I'll show you more about that later. I let the glue dry for 15 minutes. I'll face it off, make sure it's the right thickness, and then I sand it, and then I'll glue another one on. I do put a center line on the maple just for reference, but how I get the rotation is I'm taking the joint of the maple and the padauk, I'm lining that up with the glue joint of the disc that's below the one I'm gluing it to. That will give you a perfect rotation. I have six more rings plus a top ring that's probably going to be made from Wingay. I want to go ahead and get the shape from, from here down and then we'll add some more rings. I'm going to be using a half inch bowl gouge. Looks like it's pretty balanced. About 850 RPM. The cone center did a really nice job of centering those rings. It's not in the way, so I just leave it on there while I'm doing this turning. Well, I did say it should get more interesting, and I think it did, and I hope you think so as well. If you're not subscribed and you find this interesting and you want to see more of it, please consider subscribing.
Creating the shape on the segmented turning is usually pretty easy, especially on this one, and I'll tell you more about that later. So the diameter of each one of these rings pretty much creates the shape. As long as I don't cut too much away, I think we're going to be fine, because I don't have a real thick wall thickness. But yeah, that's... That's looking pretty cool. Let's see where we're at here. All right, that's pretty close to what I was planning on and I might just uh, stop there. I could take another eighth inch off but I'm going to leave it for now. Go ahead and do some blending this direction and then we'll do some more gluing. Alright, that's far enough for now. I want to get the rest of it glued on and make sure I can get a nice blend in here. Okay, I got about four more rows to go. I just wanted to get these all cleaned up here. Okay, last ring. That ring right there, that's the last one I'm putting on. That's Wenge. And it's a fairly hard wood. And this is sticking out a ways. And I've got my steady rest on it. And right there it's actually somewhat thin because I've hollowed it out to that point. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use this small carbide hollowing tool just to clean that up. Doing about 800 RPM. Alright, I think we can go ahead and get this sanded and then we'll move the steady rest and do the outside. Alright, I'm going to sand it from uh, 120 to 320. The rest of it was already done. I just, just needed to do this end.
All right, that looks pretty good. Well, we're almost done. I just need to blend these segments down to here. And doing a segmented job like this, I threw this in Wood Turner Pro. You're sort of like connecting the dots or, you know, painting by number. There's the my design. I did that in Wood Turner Pro and the segments are calculated off of this little drawing. So it's just a matter of connecting from this one to this one, but you do not want to do it in a straight line. You want to do it with a curve. So that's what we're going to do right now and we are just about done. I'm using some support over here. Doing about uh, 800 RPM. Alright, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to get set up and do some sanding. Alright, I'm going to sand it using sheets of paper. And I don't mind doing it that way because all the green is going that way. And that's the way we'll be sanding. I'm going to start with a 150. I've got a 220, 320, and a 400. I'll just switch to those as I need it. And I'll show you a little bit of this. But the rest of it will look exactly the same. And I'll run the lathe and reverse at about 450. Pretty easy. I'll see you when it's time to put the finish on. Okay, it is time. And I know I've been waiting for this. And I know a lot of other people wait for this as well. It's time to put the finish on it. I know for at least the first coat, I'm going to use uh, Def Lacquer because I have Paducah in there. And almost anything else I try to put on, if I wipe it on, the Paducah's going to bleed. So I've done this before. I've explained really light dusting coats on it maybe two or three times. There you go. And I'll let that flash over and I'll do it two more times. And uh, when I put the finish on it, Pretty much going to look the same, so I'll see you when it's done. Well, here it is. It is all done. I'm pretty happy with it. You probably saw the bigger version of this, but this is totally different. Let me tell you about it. It's seven inches tall. It's three inches in diameter on the top, three and three quarters at the widest section, and it's three inches down here. There's 288 segments. It's made from maple, paduk, and sepile. And the top is made from wingay, and so is the bottom. I use Def Lacquer sprayed on, and I use X Abrasive Paste and the polish. So, why did I make this little one when I already had a big one? Well, I was asked a couple times, how hard is it to scale something like this down? Well, with Wood Turner Pro, it's very easy, and that's what I did. And I managed to make one that's, well, it's much smaller. I'll put a picture in the end of the big one alongside this one. The other reason is I wanted to test out this little segment uh, set up here where I can measure it with a pair of calipers. Here's some calipers. Put that in there, close up on it, tighten it down, and I cut them and they were absolutely perfect. There's no readjusting anything and a deal with the segments, especially small ones, you really want to be really close to the dimension. On a small one, if you were 20 thousandths short on the length, you may not have enough stock right here to get this shape. So I trust that. I cut every one of them doing it that way and then I just kind of cut the high spots off and that's what we ended up with. 
So I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I sure enjoyed making this and I sure hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, click that like button and leave a comment. Tell me in the comments what you liked about it. If there's something you didn't like, tell me that as well. I do all kinds of turnings. I really love segmented turning, but I just like to grab a chunk of wood and turn that sometimes as well. If you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Thank you very much for all you current subscribers. You really mean a lot to me. So, till the next time, see you later.